Nothing on the Bonnell Foundation's Living with Cystic Fibrosis podcast should be considered medical advice. Medical advice can only come from your CF physician. Cystic fibrosis can be a devastating diagnosis, but living with the disease can bring positivity and a new appreciation for each day. From the Bonnell Foundation in Detroit, Michigan, it's the Living with Cystic Fibrosis podcast, sponsored by Vertex Pharmaceutical. Here's your host, Laura Bonnell. If you're taking one of Vertex medications, you may be aware that the GPS program at Vertex recently made changes to its copay assistance program. In September of 2022, a patient advocate at Vertex reached out to the Bonnell Foundation, and the reason for the Zoom meeting was to explain how the copay assistance program would change in 2023. It's my understanding that Vertex reached out to many CF nonprofits so that in addition to communicating directly with enrolled patients, foundations like mine would also help spread the word and know where to direct people if they had any questions. So Vertex has communicated that they oppose any programs or initiatives that increase the cost for patients. And this means, for example, that an insurance company taking funds that were provided to patients as part of the GPS program. Copay accumulators and maximizers work this way. I can explain. You take your assistance or coupon from your pharma, you give it to your pharmacy. The insurance company gets those funds, but they don't go toward your out-of-pocket responsibility. So the insurance company actually gets paid twice. In Michigan, advocates like myself are trying to change this law so that the copay assistance gives credit to the consumer. You may have seen press releases or posts on social media from other foundations or patients regarding these changes, some of which express concern that people taking Vertex medicines will literally pay the price. Vertex has assured the enrolled patients that no one will go without their medication. Joining us today is Jenna Harrington, who is the head of Vertex's Guidance and Patient Support Program. She's going to help us understand more about these changes, who is impacted, and why these changes are made. Also joining us is the Chief Patient Officer at Vertex, Amit Sachdev. To be transparent, Vertex is the sponsor of this podcast and our Night of Hope celebration event. My foundation remains objective in getting out information and will call out any person or partner if we believe that they are harming or not addressing our CF community properly. So welcome to you both, Amit and Jenna, and let's start with an overview of the Vertex Patient Support Program. And Jenna, if you'll get us started. Sure, Laura. Well, that's a great place to start. My team at Vertex GPS provides personalized support to 20,000, actually 24,000 patients in the United States taking Vertex medicines. We support patients as they start their medicine and throughout their treatment journey, We also provide educational resources to help manage living with CF. We have tools that help establish treatment routines, manage refills, and plan ahead for life's changes, as we know there can be many. Uh, We also provide, importantly, and something we're going to talk a lot about today, financial assistance through our program, which helps people living with cystic fibrosis cover the costs of their vertex medicines. Really important information that, as you know, really affects the CF community. And You recently made some changes to the copay assistance program. What can you share about that? We did, Laura. A few months ago, we announced changes to Vertex's GPS copay assistance program. And those changes recently took effect on January 1st of 2023. I'm still getting used to saying that in the new year here. Right. Uh, (laughs) um, So the maximum amount of copay assistance for eligible patients is $20,000 per year. That should provide enough assistance to cover out-of-pocket costs of Vertex medicines for patients whose insurance plans adhere to the federal limits set by the Affordable Care Act for essential health benefits. So patients covered by these types of traditional commercial insurance plans will not be impacted by the program changes and may pay as little as $0 for their Vertex medicine. However, patients whose insurance plan includes a copay adjustment program, such as an accumulator or maximizer, I'm sure something we're going to want to talk more about uh, today, Patients in those plans may face higher out-of-pocket costs due to the restrictive design of their insurance program. So 
these changes aren't ones that we at Vertex want to be making. We've been forced to make these changes in response to restrictive insurance practices that increase costs for patients. We have to ensure these types of insurance practices are banned through state and federal legislation. I'm sure that's something Amit will talk more about later in the podcast today. Um, importantly, we at Vertex GPS have been working with the entire cystic fibrosis community since early fall to ensure that everyone who might be impacted by the changes have a plan for continued affordable access for their Vertex medicine. And most importantly, we're committed to ensuring that no one discontinue their Vertex medicine due to these changes. And like I saw yesterday on social media, really good feedback. Um, people said they were getting answers. So that is great to see. And can you, Jenna, provide more detail on the copay adjustment programs? Yeah, definitely, Laura. And I'm really glad to hear about the good feedback. That's what our team is here, here to help each and every individual. Copay adjustment programs is a somewhat new concept and not always a simple one. Um, in recent years, insurance companies have implemented copay adjustment programs. And what these programs do is they restrict the copay assistance provided by drug manufacturers from counting towards an individual's annual deductible and or out-of-pocket maximums. And when insurers don't count the copay assistance from manufacturers towards these limits, the deductibles and out-of-pocket maximums, they increase their profits while increasing out-of-pocket costs for patients with chronic diseases. And this term copay adjustment program, we use that as an umbrella overarching term. There are two key types of adjustment programs that you and others may be more familiar with. Those are accumulators and maximizers. These programs can also have lots of different names depending on your insurance. Two examples are out-of-pocket protection program or variable copay program. So both of these types of programs, accumulators and maximizers, prevent the assistance from manufacturers like Vertex from counting towards patients' annual deductibles and or out-of-pocket maximums. But they are a bit different, and the difference is in how they take the copay funds from patients and what ultimately people living with cystic fibrosis are responsible for. So I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about each of them just to differentiate these two programs. So in a typical accumulator program, the plan accepts or accumulates the maximum value or limit of the manufacturer's assistance program from the patient before the out-of-pocket cost start counting towards deductibles and out-of-pocket maximums. So once the manufacturer's limit is reached, that's when a patient becomes responsible for paying the out-of-pocket costs for their medicines. So that's the accumulator program. Um, the other one is a maximizer program. And in a typical maximizer program, the plan adjusts the patient's copay responsibility to match the maximum assistance that a manufacturer will provide to the patient. And they often spread that evenly throughout the year. These programs typically commit that the enrollee will pay $0 for the medication. As with accumulators, though, copay assistance doesn't count typically towards the patient's deductible or out-of-pocket maximum. And so that means that the individual will have to reach their deductible and out-of-pocket maximum separately. So that was a fair bit to chew on, Laura. The last thing I would just say about what these programs are, um, they have received a fair bit of attention recently. Manufacturers and patient advocacy groups across many different communities and disease areas have publicly communicated the negative impact that these copay adjustment programs have and the risk that they pose to patients staying on track with treatment. This includes pending lawsuits brought by patient advocacy groups, as well as laws that have passed in 16 states and Puerto Rico that ban payer and pharmacy benefit manager use of some copay adjustment programs, as well as bills that are currently in review across many states, as well as the federal legislature. And it was really important that you explained that so clearly because I think people do get confused and there is so much to learn. So I thank you for clarifying all of that because 
it will certainly help our CF community who is listening. Also, accumulators, you know, and maximizers, they were introduced years ago. So why now is the action happening? Yeah, well, as you mentioned in the beginning, definitely a complicated topic. And so that's one of the roles that we can do in our program through GPS is definitely feel free to reach out. We don't expect every member of the community to know these programs inside and out. And that's exactly what we're here for. Your question on why now, Laura, also is a good one. So these restrictive insurance programs have really increased in prominence in the last two or three years. In 2020, as an example, 68% and 58% of individuals with commercial insurance had accumulators and maximizers respectively as part of their benefit design. And so these insurance programs have very rapidly taken advantage of the patient assistance that companies like Vertex have provided. They accumulate or maximize the assistance that manufacturers provide in good faith to patients, even though that assistance is intended solely for the patient. So that's really the why on the timing. The acceleration of these insurance trends have forced Vertex to make these changes for the 2023 calendar year. And though we have to make these changes, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, we at Vertex and directly within Vertex GPS are committed to ensuring that no patient has to discontinue their Vertex medicine due to these program changes. And we're working one-on-one with each individual who's impacted to ensure continued access to Vertex medicines. And that is wonderful to hear. What is the impact of these changes on patients from these insurance programs? That is the question. And we're learning a lot in early January as well. For patients who are in maximizer programs, we've seen that their insurance has covered the full cost of their Vertex medicine after any program cap. As a reminder, though, since manufacturer assistance does not count towards the patient's annual deductible and or the out-of-pocket maximum, patients do have to pay for other health care costs. Patients in accumulator programs uh, may experience higher out-of-pocket costs because of the new limit, which is $20,000 per year. That's around 3% of the 24,000 members of the community that we work with and support. And we're working with each individual who's impacted to plan ahead for this change. As I mentioned, we've been working together since early fall and to create tailored plans for continued affordable access. And Amit, now we happily get to you as well to talk about some factors. Are these insurance practices only impacting the CF community and Vertex? Hi, Laura. It's great to see you again, and thank you for having us on. The answer to that is uh, no. Accumulators and maximizers can apply to really any medication, but insurance providers typically will target specialty medicines where manufacturers do offer copay assistance. And for us, that's the situation. Vertex does offer that. And so these insurance practices really do significantly impact people with serious and chronic illnesses like cystic fibrosis and other chronic illnesses as well, more than maybe others. But we are not the only ones um, that are also making these changes. And in fact, this is a trend as we see growth of these uh, maximizer and accumulator programs across the industry. We're seeing folks have to make these changes to address what's happening. Thank you. Jenna, what could the higher out-of-pocket costs look like for patients in the accumulator programs? How much will they be expected to pay for their Vertex medication? It's a really good question. And the answer is, it varies. So out-of-pocket costs vary by plan. I think my team often says, if you've seen one insurance plan, oftentimes you've seen one insurance plan. But once our assistance is capped that we provide from Vertex to patients, the patient will be responsible by what's required by their plan until they reach their out-of-pocket maximum if you're in one of those accumulator programs. If a patient hasn't met their annual deductible from other healthcare costs, then that's the first amount you would pay the deductible amount. Then you'd be responsible for the copay or the coinsurance, which is another amount set by your plan. That can vary, can be hundreds or thousands of dollars, depending on the plan. 
until the out-of-pocket maximum is reached. And then once the out-of-pocket maximum is reached, that's when coverage kicks in in full and the insurance provider covers the remaining costs of the Vertex medicine. The last thing I'll mention here is around that maximum out-of-pocket limit. And importantly, the Affordable Care Act does set regulations on the total out-of-pocket costs that an insurance plan can impose in a calendar year for essential health benefits. So in 2023, that limit is $9,100 for an individual and $18,200 for a family. So as long as a plan classifies their Vertex medicine as an essential health benefit, $9,100 is the total maximum amount an individual patient could expect to pay out-of-pocket costs for any covered expenses in the year. Gotcha. Thank you. And what happens if a patient can't afford the out-of-pocket costs? Because there must be some patients, right, that wouldn't be able to afford that? Absolutely. Um, Many patients can't afford paying the full $9,100 out-of-pocket maximum. And we're working with many of them right now. And uh, if we aren't working with you yet and you're listening, please do call our teams. We're here to help. That's why Vertex provides the copay assistance. Our assistance is meant to help cover the amount a patient is responsible for paying for their Vertex medicine. And we remain committed to helping each patient enrolled in our program get the financial support that they need for their Vertex medicine. And if you can't afford that amount, that's why we're working directly on looking into options for affordability, whether that's through third-party charitable foundation support, looking for another health plan, or exploring options directly through Vertex. We're committed to ensuring that nobody discontinues their Vertex medicine due to these program changes. Thank you. And just want to keep reminding everyone throughout this podcast that we are in the show notes. We have all the information that people can directly reach DPS through the phone numbers and the website that we have in the show notes. So people should check that out as well. What help is available, Jenna, to patients who may need that additional assistance that you were just referring to? Yes, there are many options available. So patients who are in traditional health plans, those that do not have a copay adjustment program, are eligible for a higher per fill assistance amount through Vertex. So to receive this support, you would complete a form provided by your GPS support specialist, and we can make that change quickly. That happens in one business day or less. For patients who are in those copay adjustment programs, the accumulators or maximizers, A first place to start is with your insurance provider. So as I mentioned earlier, we've seen that some insurance plans, particularly those maximizer programs, will pick up any additional cost above the Vertex program maximums. The provider, the insurance provider, may also be able to offer an accommodation or exception for their Vertex medicine, such as excluding it from the copay adjustment program or classifying the medicine as an essential health benefit. So the out-of-pocket costs that the patient is responsible for are limited by those limits in the Affordable Care Act I talked about earlier. Another option, other than talking to your insurance provider or insurance plan, is to speak with a human resources representative from your employer if that's where you get your insurance. The employer may have other options, other insurance plans available. And Vertex, uh, our team here in GPS, does have resources available to help have these conversations. I know they aren't always easy, especially in something as technical as insurance. And so uh, we can definitely help provide resources in terms of the types of questions to ask both your insurance provider and your employer. Now, beyond that work on the insurance side, there are also third-party charitable organizations that provide financial assistance to people living with cystic fibrosis. And in GPS, we can share these organizations and which ones are open for folks to contact and get that help. And then lastly, and importantly, if someone's pursued those options that I mentioned, Vertex has other options available directly with us that we can discuss. We're committed to ensuring that nobody discontinues their Vertex medicine due to these program changes. And that is good to know. And also, I would have to say that, you know, the Bonnell Foundation helps with financial assistance as well. But it sounds like everybody's getting the information they need by calling the GPS program because we have not had any requests. So that's good. 
Um, what should patients uh, be doing now uh, that these changes are in effect? So if you're enrolled in the GPS copay assistance program, and if you have any questions related to these changes, call my team at Vertex GPS immediately. It's great, Laura, that you mentioned it's in the show notes. No one should be wondering if or how they're going to pay for their Vertex medicine as a result of these changes. As I mentioned, there are lots of options available to help. Another tip here is if you're enrolled, you can schedule your first refill of the year or your next refill with GPS where we can be on the phone with you and the pharmacy. And we can make sure at that time of that refill that the assistance is working appropriately and that there aren't any surprises or errors. And if there are, we can help there in real time. No one should have to adjust, reduce, or discontinue their Vertex medicine due to affordability concerns. In addition, no one should risk going into debt due to high out-of-pocket costs set by their insurance provider. Um, that's why Vertex has pathways available to help every individual taking our medicine who is enrolled in our program and is committed to affordable access. Thank you. And Amit, what is Vertex doing to address these insurance practices that can really impact CF communities in a harmful way? Is this a systematic problem? Hi, Laura. Yeah, it is. And thank you uh, for letting us describe this in more detail. In fact, as you noted earlier, an issue that's been going on for a little while. And so over the last several years, while we've seen these practices ramp up, we have been advocating for changes at the state and federal level, as Jenna mentioned, in the form of legislation to ban these practices because we don't think they're appropriate and that they harm patients. And so um, we have been partly successful in lobbying for that. And 16 states in Puerto Rico have already banned the use of copay accumulators by insurers. Um, we're also seeking at the federal level uh, legislation that's similar to the state bans, but applies more broadly. Because at the state level, really only a subset of patients are protected because many of the plans are regulated by the federal government. And so the state bans can't touch those. And so uh, some plans have devised ways around these bans as well. Uh, and so we have more work to do than just passing state accumulator bans. We are working with a broader coalition to do just that, to pass state accumulator bans in as many states as we can. But we also have to address the maximizer programs that Jenna talked about, which violate the spirit of those laws, but aren't covered by those laws, and the federally covered plans that we need federal legislation for. So we have that going as well and passing Federal legislation is not easy. It typically takes a while and a concerted effort and a lot of voices. In addition to the legislative activities, though, we've also talked to the um, Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services it's called CMS. That's the agency in the federal government that regulates access for care and, and funds for Medicare and Medicaid access. We want them to also shield patients from these insurance programs, and we've asked them to do that, and they've recently put a regulation in effect that requires most insurers to at least disclose whether the plans count copay assistance from third parties in figuring out the calculation of the employee's deductible and out-of-pocket maximum. What I'm saying is, even before now, until that regulation came into effect, it wasn't always clear whether an enrollee was in one of those plans. And at least with the regulation now, we can get more visibility and transparency into how these plans are operating, who they're affecting as we continue the effort to try to seek a federal law that bans this practice that hurts patients. That is so critical. Thanks for mentioning all of that. It can be so frustrating too. And absolutely on the state level, as we have found out, it is challenging to get things done. We're grateful to our lawmakers, but it, it can be frustrating. You know, people can be the change. They can be the help. So they can get involved and help address uh, these insurance practices, correct? Yes. And a good place to start would be um, a website called allcopayscount.org. It's a website for a coalition of folks who have been advocating for these changes at the state and federal level. And people should check that out if they're interested to learn more. But there is a broader group of patient groups and others who have banded together and are supporting uh, both the state level uh, legislation and at the federal level. At the federal level, there was a bill that was introduced last Congress and the allcopayscount.org coalition was a part of the effort to get that done. 
that was designed to stop these insurance practices. For those of you who want to look it up, it was a House bill called HR 5801 that helped Copays Act. And while that Congress ended and we have a new Congress in session now as we start the year, we'll be working uh, with the coalition to try to seek reintroduction of that bill and expand the uh, support in the legislature to get that done. Information there is available again at allcopayscount.org. And we'll also put that in the show notes so that people can find that and the bill number as well, because that's really important. And it is also, I know you're both aware, it's something that the Bonnell Foundation is very involved in here in Michigan and trying to be heard. Uh, It's been taking over a year just working on that legislation in regard to copay accumulators. So thanks for pointing that out. And again, we will put that in show notes along with all the GPS information as well so people can find it easily. And as we wrap up, what are the key takeaways that you would like to close with? And Jenna, we'll start with you. Mine's really straightforward. If you're enrolled in the GPS program and you have concerns or questions about these program changes, call us. That's what we're here for. We're here to help. No one should be wondering how they're going to afford their Vertex medicine. And we will support each of you through these changes. Our phone number is also available on our website if you ever need it, vertexgps.com. I know Laura has it below call us so we can help you. Yep, we will definitely put all of this on show notes because there is a lot of information. Ami, what are your final thoughts? My first thought is thank you. Gratitude to you for letting us have this time to talk to you and the community about what's going on. As Jenna said, it is complicated and our phone lines are open. If you have any questions, you should call and we're happy to talk about any of the subjects that we covered today. But you should also know that we are committed to working to address and stop these harmful and restrictive insurance practices that affect patients. We do oppose any programs or initiatives that increase costs for patients by taking the funds provided to patients as part of patient support programs and using them inappropriately. We'll continue to advocate consistently to ensure that our assistance directly benefits you, the patients, and your ability to afford uh, access to medicines. And we would welcome anyone who wants to join in these efforts. Fantastic. Thank you. And I guess I do have two last questions. I want to know from each of you, and Jenna, we'll start with you, but what inspires you about working with the CF community? You don't have children or a spouse with CF. This is your job. So what inspires you? That's an awesome question, Laura. And it's really hard to pick just one reason why. I was drawn to working with the cystic fibrosis community because of my personal experiences and friends who were part of this community and impacted by the disease. And because of the incredible science at Vertex back when I joined uh, in 2015, actually my first conversation was over a coffee uh, with Amit uh, back then, I guess it would have been back in early 2024. I've been inspired by this community every single day since over the past eight years. And that's because of people like you and your family. I've gotten to know so many through uh, my work with the GPS program over the past five plus years. I'll share with you, I guess, instead of just one thing, my favorite tradition that we have uh, on our Vertex GPS team. It's something we call Dose of Inspiration. And once a month, we all get together to hear a story about a specific patient, family, a moment or a milestone. And some of you listening, you might know about this tradition because we always ask for permission uh, before we share your story with lots of other Vertexians, as we call ourselves. And whether it's a story about someone starting a new medicine, meeting finally face-to-face, which is one of our favorite things to do at a CF Center family day or a walk, uh, navigating a tricky access situation or a personal story, these doses are always the highlight of my month. Is we, a lot of times we leave crying, laughing, um, or all sorts of other emotions. And it's just such a special way to celebrate the community. And Laura, the last thing I'll say about this community is it just strikes me so strongly how much they care about each other. And they celebrate together, whether that's on social media or other ways when Uh, individuals receive their first shipment of a new Vertex medicine, and they also advocate for each other when more support is needed. And I have really appreciated that as we've navigated these changes to our copay assistance programs. I've received many personal emails and phone calls as the head of this program from patients or members of the community who aren't directly impacted 
Um, they may have a different type of insurance or um, not even be treated with our medicines yet. And they're reaching out because they're concerned for others. And to me, that's what this community stands for. That's exactly what I would expect. And that's the type of engagement that inspires me is how this community leans on and supports one another. And that's also exactly why Vertex is with the community in every step along the way, including as we navigate these changes in the coming weeks and months, uh, sharing our broad commitment to affordable access and ensuring that no one discontinues their medicine due to these program changes. So it's a long answer. Hard to pick just one. It is, I know I am preaching to the choir, so to speak, just such an amazing and special community. And it's been my privilege to get to work and be a small part of it over the past eight years. Well, thank you. And before we get to a meet, I have to say I loved when my girls and I spoke to the scientists at Vertex. Um, we traveled to Boston. It was so great for all of us. It was great to meet the scientists and it was great for them. And that was the reason that Vertex did it was so that the scientists who are working so hard could see the faces of the people they're helping. I think that is just a huge factor that I love that Vertex does consistently. So thank you. And Amit, we want to hear from you as well about the impact of the CF community on you. Thanks, Laura. And about that program you mentioned, I'm glad that you really got a lot out of coming to Vertex for that program. We weren't able to run that program during the height of the pandemic, as you can imagine, but we're back to uh, welcoming folks again. So if folks have an interest, we are doing that and people should reach out and let us know. That's meaningful for our employees as much as it is meaningful for the CF community. We love those interactions and we're happy to be able to have them again. For me, it's I'll keep the theme that Jenna said. Of, I'm a long time Vertexian, as she called it. I go back in the company to 2007. And so when you've been there that long, many of the people in the company begin to feel like family, extended family. But also that means that I've gotten to know the CF community from long before we even had our first approved medicine in the market to help with cystic fibrosis when it was still in research and then in the clinic. And back then there was a lot of hope that we were working hard to translate into new therapies. And as we advance forward, I can think of a story that best encapsulates this. I remember uh, the day one of our medicines got approved was just before one of the big CF medical conferences. And I had flown in to meet with a group of patients at the conference um, and it was a good day because we had the recent approval in the U.S. of the medicine. So people were very excited about that. Um, and I was there with some of the scientists that you know that work in our San Diego uh, research labs who are instrumental in getting these medicines discovered and, and developed. And we sat down and I could see a lot of emotion in the room in the community. And I thought, oh, they've been waiting so long for this new therapy and it's very emotional for them. And in fact... I started to ask and, and understand what was going on and why there were tears in the room. And it wasn't actually about the new medicine. It was because there were others in the room, people with CF who weren't going to benefit because they aren't responsive to a CFTR modulator and they need to wait longer. And so you had the community, while they were so happy for their own CFers, people with CF that they knew or that they had in their family and what they were going to be able to do with the new therapy, but they were at the same time so concerned that we needed to go all the way. And so that, like Jenna said, is just who the CF community is. They care about each other deeply. They know each other well. It's not just the CF uh, person, the person with CF, but their family, their caregiver, their friends, and their community. And from the day one, that was very clear that the cystic fibrosis community is one of the most deeply connected and caring communities out there. And so that's why I've enjoyed working with them for so long. And I look forward to that continued partnership. And while we can sit here with you and talk to you about insurance plan changes and designs in a way um, that's meaningful to the community. So thank you, Laura, for being part of the community. And thank you for hosting us today. Thank you both. And I know, Jenna, you said you met Amit in 2024, because like me, I was thinking it was 2024 yesterday. But I know you probably met 2014. So... <laughs> I just wanted to say, though, again, I appreciate your transparency. It's wonderful. And it's hopefully putting a face to Vertex for a lot of people who haven't had the pleasure of meeting you both yet. And again, I hope that everyone reaches out to the GPS program. All the information is in show notes. So 
if anybody has any questions, all the information is in there so they can get to the right people. So thank you both very much. Appreciate it. Thank you, Laura. Great to see you. Yeah, thanks so much for for having us. Maybe next time we'll talk. One, we will have invented time travel, Laura. <laughs> right. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. The original music in this podcast is performed by Kevin Allen. It's not complicated. Who happens to have cystic fibrosis? We all got our worries and fears. I know what's got you frustrated, but loving you is so alright. This has been the Living with Cystic Fibrosis podcast. For more information and to learn more about the Bonnell Foundation. Visit our website at thebonnellfoundation.org. That's the B O N N E L L Foundation.org. This podcast was sponsored by Beatrice, Genentech, and Vertex. It was produced by Jagged Detroit Podcasts. Follow our show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you're listening right now. <laughs>